Hi there and welcome to another Sonic Academy tutorial with me, Phil Johnston. In this one we're going to be taking a look at kick 2 and when and how to tune kicks. Um, so there's a lot of people always talk about tuning kicks and, and how to do it. And I think probably the more important thing is uh, why you should do it and when you should do it. Um, and what sort of styles it suits. Generally speaking, I like to keep my kicks quite short, so I don't do a lot of tuning on my kicks. Um, and I'll show you a sort of, I've got a, a basic example track, just a very simple um, middle of the road um, dance track with a bass line. Um, and I'll just go through sort of some kick examples and the benefits and um, how they work and stuff. So. Um, we've got a basic kick here. I've actually already got this pitched to the bass line, which is in A. <clears throat> so one of the first considerations you have to make is um, if your bass line is in A, does your kick sound good tuned to A? And you have to outweigh that with the fact of just getting a, a nice fat kick drum. So for example, I think this tuning to A makes your kick drum a wee bit boingy and it's a bit too high pitched. That doesn't really sound very nice. Um, so if we take it out of the tuning vibe, we can just get a nice heavier sounding kick. If you compare that kick to back being there. And especially as you go up. So say we went to a C, say. We can obviously go up to a C or down to a C. If we go down to a C, your kick is probably going to be too low. Just sounds too flabby. And if we go up to the C, it ends up too sort of high pitched. Now you could go for um, something like a fifth of the C, which would be a G. And the other thing to bear in mind, that actually sounds good. I tend to like the kicks um, around G or F. I think it gives you the best weight on the kicks and it just has a sort of nicest tone. And <clears throat> around that sort of 50 hertz to 40 hertz mark is kind of, you wouldn't want to go any lower than 40, I don't think, for a kick drum because it just becomes too flabby and um, it just fills a, a club room too much with just sub. Uh, so the other thing to take into consideration is how long you want your kick. Because if you have a short kick, it's not going to make any difference if you sort of set these tuning nodes up anyway. Um, Let's have a look. So we'll go into our amp. Obviously, if we have a nice long kick that stretches over an entire beat, you can really hear the tuning difference. But then you run into the issue of if you're using a fast bass line, that your kick is actually extending on past where your bass notes are. So then you have to get into side chaining and various different things and you can lose out um, some clarity. So if we shorten our kick back down, you'll hear it just sort of tightens things up a bit. And believe me, that kick, even though it's quite short in a club environment, it'll still have that sort of thump that you need. Um, sometimes when you just make your kick, kicks too big, then it just doesn't work. Um, so there's some considerations to take in. So if you do want to tune a kick, really what you're looking at is these last two nodes. And these last two nodes have to um, settle at the end of your kick on a tone. Um, and again, this all depends very much on how long your kick actually is. If your kick is only short, then it's not actually getting time to reach down and settle on a tone, so you're not actually hearing anything. So you would need to extend your kick. I 
and kicks like that will work f absolutely for certain genres. So it really just depends on the, the genre that you're making. Things like trance, um, EDM, I don't see the real point or the sort of the more electro side of EDM. I don't see the point because their kicks tend to be quite sort of um, short and hard. And But then some instances of techno where you have that sort of more resonating kick it's definitely useful. So you can play about. Basically, you want to just keep these last two nodes in tune and just keep an eye on where you're tuning. I think really A is as high as I would go. And I think probably E would be as low as I would go on a kick if you're wanting it tuned. So even that's a bit low, I think. Try F. Still sounds a tiny bit low. So around A and G are the sort of sweet spots for me. So if your chin doesn't match those into those keys, it might be a better idea just to not um, do a, a chin kick. And that's easy to remedy. You just sort of keep the sweep going down for a bit longer. And then you can't pick out a tone in the kick, but it still has a nice heavy heavy weight to it. So there you go, there's some tips on tuning kicks. Um, and uh, as I said, it really is just about finding the best kick and the best sound. It's not always important to have it tuned. So um, just go with your gut instinct and um, feel it out as it were. Um, tuning isn't 100% important, but if you are looking for that particular sound or you have a really subby bass line that you want to accentuate, then by all means you can do it by just matching these two last notes. So there you go. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you found this video super useful, please We'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.